Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of the Internet Computer Developer Journey. In today's episode 5.2, using the EVM RPC canister, we're going to be taking a look at how we can use ICP's integration with Ethereum and other EVM chains. This integration is different from the Bitcoin integration that we explored in a previous tutorial. So previously, when we looked at the Bitcoin integration, we learned that ICP has a direct integration with Bitcoin, meaning that there are nodes running on the ICP network that run the Bitcoin node software themselves. ICP currently doesn't have the same type of integration for Ethereum, so we do not have any nodes that are running the Ethereum node software. And instead, ICP is able to communicate with Ethereum and other EVM compatible networks through a decentralized RPC integration. So to facilitate communication to RPC services, we use the EVM RPC canister. So if we take a look at this diagram here, we can see a quick visualization of how the Bitcoin integration differs from the decentralized RPC integration. So on the direct integration side, on the left, we can see that the Bitcoin network is integrated directly into the ICP network. Whereas other chains, their network is still separate from the ICP network, and we are using a different communication format with those chains. Specifically, the EVM RPC canister enables your smart contract that's deployed on ICP to sign and submit tra transactions directly to Ethereum and other chains using HTTPS outcalls and threshold ECDSA signatures. Eventually, there are plans for the EVM RPC canister to be replaced by an on-chain Ethereum API that is made possible by running full Ethereum nodes on the ICP network. But for now, we are going to explore the decentralized RPC integration that exists today. While the Ethereum integration is different from the Bitcoin integration, it still enables there to be chain key Ethereum similar to CKBTC. The Ethereum integration also expands to include CK ERC20 tokens, which include CK USDC, CK EURC, and CK USDT. So to take a look at how you can use the Ethereum RPC canister, we're going to use a sample boilerplate project that's going to showcase the basic functionalities of a canister that makes calls to the Ethereum RPC canister. This project is going to be comprised of three canisters, a front-end canister, which uses a combination of TypeScript, Vite, and React as the core components to create the basic user interface. Then it's going to have the back-end canister written in Matoko that uses the Mops package manager and live development server Modev for Mo Matoko development. And then it's also going to include a local instance of the EVM RPC canister, which is going to be pulled into the project using DFX steps. Before we get started, verify that you have set up your developer environment according to the instructions in the previous module 0.3 developer environment setup. And then we're going to download the starter projects files. So to get started, open up a new terminal window, navigate into a working directory for your developer journey if you have one. And then we are going to use the git clone command. And we are going to use a different URL from the other example projects that we've deployed in other tutorials. And so once we have that cloned, we're going to navigate into the Vite React Matoko directory. And then we want to use the git switch command because this example directory includes several different variations that are all stored on different branches. And we want to use the EVM RPC branch. So we'll use git switch and then we will be on that EVM RPC branch. Now let's take a look at the project's files. So open up your IDE of choice. I'm going to use Visual Studio and I'm going to open this Vite React Matoko project. And then if we take a look at the dfx.json file for this, we can see that we have a definition for the canister EVM RPC. It's going to be a canister type pull because we are going to pull it from the mainnet and that's going to have the ID hard-coded, so we want to pull the candid and wasm files for 
this canister on the network. Then we're going to define our backend canister. This is just defined as backend, and it has a dependency of the EVM RPC canister. It's going to be a Matoko canister, and its backend file is going to be backend slash backend.mo. And then we have a front end canister that is dependent on the backend canister. It's going to be of type asset. And then the source is going to be files in the dist subdirectory. So now let's take a look at the source code for the backend canister. If we go ahead and open that up, it's going to be in this backend and then backend.mo. And then here we can see that immediately we import EVM RPC and we import the canister EVM RPC. So we are importing the locally deployed EVM RPC canister. And then we're also importing the debug and cycles libraries. Then the code for this is fairly simple. We are defining an actor, and then we are defining a public function called get latest Ethereum block. This is going to retrieve the latest block on the Ethereum network. We are going to define which RPC services we want to use. So for this, we are going to define which Ethereum or EVM network we want to make this call to, in this instance, the Ethereum mainnet. And then we have the RPC provider that we'd like to send this request through. This is going to be using Cloudflare. Now the EVM RPC canister does have several options that you can use. And so if you go to the developer documentation, And if we go down to Chain Fusion, Ethereum, EVM RPC Canister, and then Overview, we can get an overview of some more information about the EVM RPC Canister. And we can also take a look at the current supported JSON RPC providers. So we can see Alchemy, Anchor, BlockPy, Cloudflare, Public Node. You can also bring your own RPC provider. You do not have to use one of these, but these are the ones that are supported out of the box by the EVM RPC canister that you can configure these public functions to use. And you can see the few different EVM chains that are showcased here but these RPC providers are able to support more than just the chains that are listed here, such as Arbitrum, Base, and Optimism. If you scroll down, you can also see that we have a section on costs because calls to the EVM RPC canister do cost cycles. And so if we take a look at the detailed page on EVM RPC costs, Typically, they're going to cost between 10 to the 8th and 10 to the 9th cycles, which is about 0.0001 to 0.001 USD. So each call is just a fraction of a cent. It's also important to note that the EVM RPC canister methods have built-in retries and are able to send requests to multiple providers. And so the amount of cycles required for each RPC call isn't predictable, but you are able to send a maximum amount of cycles and whatever is not used by the request will be refunded to you. So now going back to the code, we can see that we need to attach some cycles to our call and we're going to call the eth underscore get block by number RPC method. And then again, there's a note that any unused cycles will be refunded. So it's okay to send more than you think you might need. RPC method eth get block by number. By default, this is going to be sent to three RPC providers. And when the result is returned, the three results are going to be compared against each other to make sure that the result is consistent. And so this is the decentralized part of this RPC integration. We are not just sending a call to one RPC provider and taking the result as we get it back. We are sending an RPC request, but then that request is being duplicated and sent through other providers. And then all of the responses that we get are being compared against each other to make sure that they are accurate and correct. And so here we are going to 
check the results of our request. And so we are going to use a switch statement that has a case for if the results are consistent, then we are going to get an OK message. If the results return an error message, we're going to get an error message. And if the results between the RPC providers are inconsistent, we are going to get an inconsistent results message. So now going back to the tutorial, we can go ahead and deploy this boilerplate project. So we can use dfx start clean background. And then because we are going to be pulling the EVM RPC canister locally, we are going to use DFX depths pull. And we're going to spell it correctly. And then we need to initialize the EVM RPC canister. And this canister takes an initialization argument of the amount of nodes in the subnet to reflect what is currently accurate on the mainnet. At the time of this recording, there are 31 subnets in the fiduciary subnet that the EVM RPC canister is deployed in, but that number is expected to be increased to 34 in the near future. So by the time you watch this, that number may be 34. So just go ahead and check this tutorial on the dev docs to see what the most accurate current number is and what you should be initializing this canister with. But for now, we'll do dfx steps in it, evm rpc argument, and then record nodes in subnet equal 31. And then we'll deploy that canister locally with dfx steps deploy. And we're gonna see we have some output and these are messages about the different RPC providers. We don't have to worry about that right now. And we can go ahead and move on to the next step where we install the program's packages and generate candid type bindings with the npm run setup command. And in the background, this npm run setup command does npm install, dfx canister create all, and DF dfx generate backend, and it does dfx deploy. So this runs four commands in the background and installs everything that we need and deploys the rest of the canisters in our project. Since we've already deployed the EVM RPC canister, now it's going to deploy the front end and back end canisters for us. And so we can see that our canisters all got deployed successfully. And so now we can do npm start, and this is going to run our local development server for our front end canister. And it's going to be deployed at this local host port 3000. So we can go ahead and open that in a new window. And then we are just going to have a simple button that says get latest block, and that's going to call this public function get latest block. And so what that does is it's going to set up our RPC request and it's going to send it to the Ethereum mainnet through Cloudflare. It's going to add some cycles to that call and then it's going to take the result of that and put it through the switch statement to determine which output message we're going to get. And so here we can see that we have an error message of call was rejected. Error from canister, canister called ICP with message. And our error is too few cycles, expected 1 billion and 94 million and got 1 billion. So we can go ahead and make an adjustment to our code and we'll just change this from 1 billion cycles to 2 billion cycles. And we'll just save that code and then We'll need to get out of our run dev.
So we'll go ahead and save that file. And then since this is using the Motoko dev server, it has live reloading. So we don't need to redeploy our canisters. And we can click get Lannis block again. And now this time we can see that we have a different error. So error from canister, error called trap with message, error HTTP call, HTTP out call error, invalid JSON RPC response, rate limiting threshold exceeded for public endpoint, please wait for running more queries. So this error message is referring to the Cloudflare RPC service. It has a rate limiting threshold. And because this EVM RPC canister is used by everyone on the network, this rate limiting threshold is currently exceeded for the public endpoint. So to fix that, let's choose another RPC provider and edit our code. So for this example, let's go ahead and just change it to block pi. So I'm just going to copy block pi and I'm going to go into our code and change Cloudflare to block pi. And then if we go back to our example, it should live reload for us using modev and then we can get latest block again. And then here we can see that we have a successful response. So we can take a look at the information that's been returned from Ethereum. And so this is the latest block information. And we can see the hash of all of the transactions that have been submitted in this Ethereum block. We can take a look at the amount of gas used, the gas limit, and then we have other information such as the miner ID, the hash ID, um, et cetera. So that is awesome. We were able to successfully get that response from Ethereum from our smart contract on ICP. And then we can also see that we have additional output in the console. So they, so the front end formats the output into a nice readable format, but then we have some additional bits in the console. So we can see that we made a call with provider block pi, and we can see exactly the URL that was called. So when our front end button was clicked, the front end triggers the get latest Ethereum block method of the back end canister. The back end canister uses HTTPS outcalls to send an eth underscore get block by number RPC request to an Ethereum JSON RPC API. It originally was configured to use Cloudflare, but we changed it to BlockPy. And by de default, the EVM RPC canister replicates that call across at least two other RPC providers for a total of three requests and three responses. The RPC request involves encoding and decoding ABI, which is the candid equivalent of in, within the Ethereum ecosystem. The latest block information is returned to the backend canister. Three responses are returned. One is going to be from the RPC provider that we specified. In this instance, we use BlockPy. And then the other two are from RPC providers that the EVM RPC canister queried automatically for decentralization purposes. The backend canister checks to be sure that all three responses contain the same information. Then the front end displays the block information that was returned. So if you wanted to deploy this starter project on the mainnet, simply run DFX deploy with the network IC flag, and then you can have your application running on the mainnet and doing the same functionalities. We can also call the EVM RPC canister from the CLI. This can be good for getting information that you are curious about, but not necessarily information that you need to reuse in a canister or an application. So to do that, we're going to open up a new window and then I'm going to navigate back into our Vite React Motoko project. And then if we want to use the CLI, we are going to have to build our RPC request within the CLI. So to make that a little bit easier, we 
can set a few environment variables that make it easier for us to reuse them throughout the RPC request. So first we can do export identity equals default, or in this instance, let's see which is my currently used identity. It should be the dev journey. So DFX identity, who am I? This is the dev journey. So I will do export identity equal dev journey and then export cycles equal, we'll do 2 billion again, since that was how much we needed for the last RPC call. So two, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And then export wallet, and we want to use the current identities wallet. So DFX identity get wallet. And then let's use the export command again to create an environment variable for RPC source. And this is going to be the network that we want to make the RPC call to. So we want to use ETH mainnet. And then lastly, we can configure our RPC provider. But for this, let's just do export RPC config equal no, so we aren't going to so we aren't going to configure a specific RPC provider. And so then if we want to call for this example, we'll use the ETH fee history method to get the gas fee history for the Ethereum network. We are going to use this DFX canister call EVM RPC which is the canister name, and then ETH underscore fee history. And then we are going to build the RPC request using the RPC source variable, RPC config variable. Record block count equal three, newest block equal variant latest. And then we're going to attach with cycles, the amount of cycles that we configured, two billion, and then using the wallet that we configured. So if we go ahead and just copy this so that there are no typos and paste this. We can see the full output of that request. And so we can see variant equals inconsistent. So this means that we did not get consistent results from the three providers that were requested. And we can see that we did get gas fee history information from the latest block on Ethereum or the latest three blocks. And then in the second result, we can see that we got this same information from the public node RPC provider. But then in the third result, we can see that it was a request to Cloudflare. And we can see that rate limiting threshold exceeded error again. So if we were to configure our RPC provider to exclude Cloudflare, we would have received an okay result that gave us, instead of inconsistent, it would have said consistent. So an example of that can be found here in the tutorial where instead of printing the three separate RPC provider results, it condenses them all into one since they all returned the same consistent result. But in this instance, because we have this error from Cloudflare, not all three are consistent. So all three were returned to us so that we could compare. We're also able to sign and submit transactions directly to the Ethereum network with a command using the ETH send raw transaction method. So here we have some of the same environment variable set, but one difference is we are setting a network environment variable. So we will do export network equal local. And if we wanted to deploy on the mainnet, we could have that be set to mainnet instead of local. And then we are going to build an RPC request that signs and submits a transaction directly to Ethereum. So it's going to include our RPC source, our RPC config, and then it's going to include the hash of that transaction 
that we want to deploy on Ethereum. And then we are going to attach cycles and the wallet again. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy this command to avoid any typos. And then our transaction ID is going to be returned from the RPC providers. And again, it's going to be returned from three different providers. And we can see that our results again are inconsistent, but from anchor and public node, the result is okay. And then there's this nonce too low value, but from Cloudflare, we are still seeing that rate limiting threshold exceeded. So in this instance, our transaction did not get signed and submitted successfully. Um, we would have to look into this nonce too low error. And if we go into the developer docs for the RPC canister and we go into using the RPC canister, we do have this note that some JSON RPC APIs may only return a nonce too low status when successfully submitting a transaction. That's because during HTTP outcall consensus, only the first request is successful while the others reply with a duplicate transaction status. One possible workaround is to use a deduplicating proxy server, such as the community built CATS EVM RPC proxy. We can see that that is expected when the first request is successful while the others were replying with a duplicated transaction status. So this does mean that our transaction was submitted to Ethereum successfully. That'll wrap things up for today's episode of the ICP Developer Journey. If you enjoyed today's episode, please be sure to like and subscribe to the Definity YouTube channel to stay up to date with the rest of the ICP Developer Journey videos and the other educational series that we have on the YouTube channel. Also be sure to leave us a comment with any questions or feedback, or you can also reach out on the ICP Developer Forum or the ICP Developer Discord server. That'll wrap things up for today. Take care.